Okay, we're almost done. Take that. Okay. Put this on. Yeah. Okay. I, I think we're ready. Can you just explain to me why we're doing any of this? It's an F-150, we're in Canada. It's, it's part of our culture, okay? You gotta do the whole thing. It, just, it right? just feels wildly inappropriate. No, 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 it's not. Just say the thing that I told you. Go. Oh, but it's so demeaning. No, 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 you can do it. <sighs> oh, yeah, bud, you wanna go up for a rip, eh? That's it! Yeah? Yeah, great job. Okay, yeah, all right. Okay. Hey, Thomas, you go to dirt, bud? Okay, that's, that's enough. That's, that's you wanna enough. smack back a two four before we go play hockey? Okay, it's just cultural appropriation now is what it uh, is. Ah, yeah. don't be a hoser. We'll just pick up a double double from Timmy's on the way. Is that Scottish? <laughs> I don't know. You're watching Throttle Hess. I'm Thomas. And I'm James. And this is the brand new Ford F-150 Super Crew Lariat 3.5 liter V6 hybrid power boost pickup truck. Is that all the thing? Yeah, I think that's it. Okay. And why are we in this truck? Because it's one of the best selling vehicles of all time. One man. of the best selling vehicles. I wanted to try so it, I, yeah. Why do we need the trailer on the back though? What trailer? Oh yeah. Um, well, we're just gonna, well, while we have it, we're yeah. gonna go uh, pick, up the, pick up my race car. Your race car? Yeah. What? You got me all excited about it. Mm -hmm. With the screens and it's 2021 and it's yep. the best selling vehicle. This is just a ploy to run an errand? No, 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 no. It's testing. It's testing. Testing. Yes, testing in the completely redesigned in and out new F-150. And this time it's a hybrid which not only gives it a stellar claimed fuel economy and a shockingly impressive zero to 60 time of 5.3 seconds, but it also adds a whole lot of new fun stuff on the inside and out. There is no question that Ford threw everything they had at this when it comes to practicality, and it's refreshing to know that you can still spec one of these all the way from the low 30s to near 100 grand Canadian. But this one, the Lariat, sits nicely in the middle. Starting at 61,000 Canadian dollars in supercrew form with the power boost engine, ours is spec today to a hair over $81,000. But for that, it has all the creature comforts you'd need and still has a ton of utility. And one of the reasons we're testing this thing is because we're actually considering buying something like this for our crew and for apparently towing Thomas's race car. So I grabbed the wheel and sent Thomas to test the back seat space of the Super Crew. If you're new to Throttle House, no, no. we do car reviews, track tests, and quite a lot of messing around. So subscribe and hit the bell. Okay, I'm driving. You are driving, yes. So as you said, this is a 3.5 litre hybrid. Yes. Which is weird, because every time I think of a truck, I'm thinking it's gonna have some big Hemi V8, like in the Rams, or this would have a V8. Yep. And yet, this actually has more horsepower and torque than the Ford V8. This yes. This is 430 horsepower and 570 pound-feet of torque. Yeah, no, it's a significant numbers. It's actually more torque than the Ford Raptor, at less horsepower, but like very similar numbers to that, like their actual sports truck, right? So, so I looked it up, yeah. and if you ignore time, yeah. <laughs> then this has the same numbers, 0 to 60, and even braking distances as a Lamborghini. It's the what? it's a Countach. Oh, okay, it's an 80s Lamborghini. <laughs> I yeah, said maybe. if you ignore time. Okay, yes, I got it, I understand. And I feel like there's been a bit of a role reversal because I feel like historically truck guys, I know historically truck guys are like anti-EV and you know, Priuses or you know hybrids. Anti-future. Anti oh man. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I feel though, as soon as they you have something in your throat, uh, yeah, yeah man, I, testosterone. You got men in your throat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, I feel like as soon as they figured out that electric power gives you a lot of torque, they were like, "No, oh, it's actually, it's actually pretty good." Like yeah. Those. Well, you said that was a, the V8 of this new generation has cylinder deactivation. It does, and, and and what I have read is that some of the like the hardcore Ford truck guys are kind of a little bit skeptical about that because I know that the cylinder deactivation caused some issues in uh, opposing brands when they introduced it. So I think there's some there's some worry about the longevity of the V8, but I, I mean, this is a pretty complex engine. It, I will say that typically what you want to do with a utility vehicle is simplify it. It's like historically, you know, just body on frame, four wheel drive. Big displacement. Big displacement V8, simple, just dumb, big dumb truck that go forever. 
this is not that. This is like got turbos and hybrids. There's a lot of stuff going on, right? You can see it on your gauge cluster. There's like a zillion things happening. It's regening the braking. You know, it's. But that's not the only consequence. Like it delivers power. It's very smooth. Smooth, and it can run on EV only, right? Yeah. Which is kind of which is kind of nice, right? I'm surprised how smooth this is, which is good because it's not that smooth elsewhere. Like the ride, you mean? The ride, yeah. There's a lot yeah. of motions going on, especially yeah. in the rear. It's got that body-on-frame truck thing. It also kind of jitters a little bit, like over like semi, even even not perfect pavement. It just kind of it kind of just jitters. Yeah. It's not it's not perfect. Which is where I think the Ram would have it. I think so. Yeah. yeah. But then maybe that's the, maybe that's the trailer in the back. Speaking of which, yeah. where, where are we going? We are going to uh, Adrena Garage. My friend uh, Alex Mechanic picked up the race car. I'm actually racing with him. We're going to pick up the car. Listen, what do you want me to do? We're busy people. We have to m take advantage of the vehicles that we have. We rarely review trucks. So you here we are. You could have taken my Miata to take it. You don't yeah, need that. Yeah, Miata has a bang on towing capacity it absolutely has the same as this which is 12,500 pounds it's like an ant it can lift 10 times as well <laughs> <laughs> running boards cool <sighs> all right Alex right. hey buddy Adrena Garage. Oh look, it's a piece of crap. Oh, would you, really? No, I, I, here, look. Oh, that's the, that's the piece of crap? Yeah, I didn't want that in your way. What's up, buddy? buddy? Good to see you. How are things? Oh, not too bad. Good? I'm in your way, you go How ahead. How are you doing? Hello, hello. All right, here it is. I'm worried if I lean against it, it will just catch on fire. That's not how these things work, okay? Uh, on. <laughs> hey! Hey! Woo! He made it work! The man, the myth, the legend! All right, should we load it up? Yeah. I'll be honest, since I've known Thomas, I've only seen this car run one time. It was borderline impressive then to see it go into reverse and actually move. So we started lining up the dusty race car for its F-150 journey. And it was immediately apparent, even after so much time away from it, that he and the car were one. An avatar-like connection between car and driver, the likes of which had never before he stalled it. Really light flywheel. Really light flywheel. It's a light flywheel. Yeah, it's light. light flywheel. Naturally, as I drove it onto the trailer, James was of no help, which made the whole process nerve wracking. I don't think he realizes that I treat this car like it's my own child. Thomas, you might have to take these little pieces of steel off. Oh, okay. Oh, well, that's great. What's your plan? What's I'm gonna get out the window like a race car driver. All right, pretend this oh, is on fire. In fact, you don't need to pretend that hard. I, it kind of looks like it should be. Uh, it's oh fine. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You get I feel like you missed a bit there. Can you just grab that and pull it over? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So perhaps more interesting than Thomas loading his janky race car onto a trailer is this set of power outlets right here. And that's because <laughs> this F-150 is spec with what Ford call Pro Power Onboard TM. It is a mobile generator that generates in this spec 7.2 kilowatts. That means that with just this truck, you can power an entire construction crew or run a tailgate party, or as the folks at TFL proved, charge an EV car to full. But as another example, take everyday homeowner Randy Jones, a Texas rootin' tootin' guy who during the snowstorms used his new F-150 to power his entire house for two whole days using just a quarter tank of fuel. Now, as an Englishman, or a little Englishman as Thomas would say, my needs are a little bit simpler. So, uh, you know, brought, as a workman, as I am, you know, blue collar and all. Is it one for me? Oh no, I brought just the one. You know what though, you've worked hard. Okay, what kind there of tea is go. this? Uh, the best kind, brown tea. It's English breakfast. Yes. Yeah, I expected you to know that. I could see it a mile away. 
After I finished my tea, I backed up the trailer to a spot where we could take a minute to talk about the styling. I didn't use the fancy backup assist feature because it takes a while to set up and the visibility is already good enough. <sighs> okay. I did it. You did it. I had to back up a trailer. And the car is on. Canadian. Aaron, Canadian. It's, it's not easy to back Canadian. up a trailer, I'm telling you. It's got the assist and everything. All right, so this looks like a truck. Looks like an F-150. Yeah, well, this one's in carbonized gray. They didn't change it much from last year. No, which means they've stayed true to the design. It's got some really cool stuff, though. Yes, well, so this there's more grills. We've got 11 new grills for this generation. Yeah, yeah. This is a funky one, I guess. I don't really like this one. You know, you're talking about grills, I feel like we should put an M4 grill on your race car, off of the track. <laughs> the new check. M4, yeah. I wonder okay. what that would look like. All right, I'll, we can make that uh, happen. But it, you're right, it does have some cool stuff. It's got zone lighting. That's cooler than it sounds, because like it's on right now, actually. We set it so it's on. You can't see it because there's a sun. But it's a really, really useful feature. It seems gimmicky, but you arrive at a campsite or your house or wherever it is, and it just lights everything out the back if you want as well. There's a, there's a lot of utility going on here. Well, that's what they did, was they just kind of threw everything at this thing in terms of every little feature you might use and none of it's gimmicky it actually all works what they didn't do though this is what we've noticed is that there's a few quality issues ford, ford things there's some ford things like some going on. some bits are built tougher than you want them to be for <laughs> yes, example right. our dear cameraman carsten there was a uh, an incident when using that's powered by the way just click it yeah click it look at that that's an extra. It is, yeah. Costs money. When sliding gr ever so gracefully mm -hmm. off of it, um, these these spikes here took yeah. they took him. We lost a man that day. We lost him. <laughs> yeah, and he lost some pant leg. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's that, and like there's. So it's, it's built up. Okay, so from the outside, not a crazy jump. No. Inside though, you've been going on about this. Big difference. Because you've been living with this car. I have, and it's, yeah. it's utility manifest, right? It is, yeah. I, I, I'll, there's the running boards. Running boards, extra option. It is an extra running option. Boards. Helpful though. I will say that I make fun of truck owners. I do. For those those of you that are watching, I mean, I, let's go, right? I don't. I think. I think you guys are great. <laughs> <laughs> I think that it is unnecessary to have a truck like this every single day if you don't have any utility to do, or you're not a contractor, you don't have a boat to tow, you don't need to drive one of these every single day. However, I get it. You get it. I get it now. Yeah, There's no. so much mass in There's front of me. There's just so much space. This, is, a, this is an office. Activities. It's an office. You put this, the shifter it's down. It's literally an office. And here you go. Yep. A desk. That's pretty that's, gross. I see we had some food we here had for some lunch. lunch. Some, some chicken sandwiches. But it's built tough, you know? <laughs> it's built tough. Um, okay. Honestly, my favorite part about this is that it feels like they, 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 they designed it in a way that they're not expecting you to have to learn how to use it. They just designed everything to be usable. Like, all the knobs make sense. Climate control is simple. You've got this digital gauge cluster, which is on the entire market. We've been in all the luxury cars. This is one of the easiest to read and easiest to use gauge clusters I've, like digital gauge it's I've ever simple. used. It's simple. And like this menu system is so intuitive, right? You got all the information you need. You select, you know, okay. And then you go back if you don't like it. There's no weird knobs or dials. Everything's labeled because, you know, why would it not be? No, and this this has the eight hundred dollar uh, Bang and Olufsen. In fact, they, they've got a fun name for it. They, they do. Yeah, it's, it's called a... the Bang and Olufsen Sound System Unleashed. Unleashed. <laughs> Everything with force. Unleashed. Built tough. <laughs> you know, just have a tea. Calm down. <laughs> I have one, it was lovely, yeah. thank you. <laughs> You're welcome for the tea, yeah. <laughs> um, the, uh, the Bang & Olufsen is actually in the headrest. I will say that the uh, the stereo is is fine. It's way better than like a basic stock stereo. Yeah. But it's not like... But worth the 800. It's not like legendary The seats are comfortable. The seats are big, they're too. Cushy, they're cushy, they're, they're big, wide. they've got memory seats in here. This is a Super Crew, it's, it's, it's very comfortable in the back. There's a huge amount of space, and the seats are, are... They're not amazingly comfortable back there, but they fold up and it's like a big storage space. And we've also them. found... We've actually used a lot of the utility. We've had cups in the cup holders. Thomas has got his phone in the phone hub. We had a walkie-talkie in what we assume is the walkie-talkie We were space. taking advantage of every aspect of this car. Um, truck, sorry, truck. Truck. Not a car. Uh, we get in trouble for that. This thing here is, is a point of contention because it sounds like it's gonna break. Um, and you know what would have been better than this like fancy schmancy thing so you could fold this out? Would be just using Ford's dial that they have on the GT500 or in their SUVs, whatever, right? Why would they not but if, just But if it? you don't need to put it down, then suddenly you have a powerful, you know, purposeful shifter. Uh-huh. Okay, or you could just have a click dial. 
I don't like that dial. No, the dial's better than buttons. No, it yeah, goes in order of buttons. This is giving you the best of both worlds. Sure. If it never breaks, it's gonna break. Um, other than that, you got the, the full outlets up here, right? So you could you could have a microwave on your lap, making pizza pockets rolling down yeah. the highway. Well, the power is where this car prevails. I yes. know they use EcoBoost and power, but I, the marketing department must be so funny there. Yeah. Okay, it's gonna have boost in it. And yeah. they're like, why? Because <laughs> it needs to. Um, but it does. I spoke about the uh, the the pro the pro power on board stuff. Yes. There's a 240 volt, and I mentioned you can charge an EV to full charge in this. TFL did an I, yeah. did a BMW i3 in like four hours. Or you can run a welder. Like it's crazy with this but, thing. But so all the arguments though about I'm not getting a Taycan, I'm not getting a Model S or anything like that because it's EV. Mm. And I, I, you know, what about range anxiety? You just need to bring an F150. All you need is one of those and boom. one of these. It's, yeah. it's sorted, right? Yeah, all right, you take us for a drive in this now. With the, with the... With the BMW. I'm, not, right. I'm, not, I'm not being in charge of your BMW. Okay, I'll drive. Okay, ready to go? I'm ready. All right, oh, there's the running boards again. It's not an elegant feature. They scare feature. you it's every not, time. It's not an elegant feature, is it? I broke the car. No, so I'm going to put it in... Oh, you've got it. A... Yeah, so I've, it says race car. Race car. I labeled the trailer race car. Ah. How cool is that? Right, and then I'm going to... These Look at these drive modes. This is nuts. Oh, that's right? a smooth animation. Really neat. So I'm going to go all the, the way... The Bronco Sport had similar to that. Yeah, but this is like bigger and brighter and cooler and better. I'm going to go to tow... <laughs> just those few things? Tow haul mode. To and what does then, that do? Well, it just... It, it puts it in a mode where I can see relevant information. Oil temps and all that stuff. It also changes the transmission settings so that it's always in the right gear. Oh, for, so it stays in like lower gears? Yeah, exactly. High revs. Okay. Okay, I'm ready to go. Here we are. It's funny, I'm not worried about your car. Well, because thanks. it's basically a big rock. I'm worried yeah. about if you mess up, it's going to ruin every other car on the highway. <laughs> I appreciate it. Okay, James, you know how like you when you pick up something heavy for you, like a fork or a bottle of water, you really struggle? Yeah. Um, th this, is, uh, <laughs> this is not like that. This is like instant torque. Like, it's really, really nice. It feels effortless. It's effortless at low speed. Carrying like the car? Yep. Like the, with the assistance of the electric motors and just kind of how much torque there is in general. All right, so how much does your car weigh, right? If this feels effortless, I'm curious. Um, well, I mean, my car is under 3,000 pounds now, I'd under say. Under 3,000 pounds? Maybe, I'd, like to, I'd like to think that it is. And the trailer is? The trailer's, well, I don't know, maybe 2,000 pounds. It's aluminum, so it's okay. a bit lighter than normal. So maximum right now, you've got 5,000 pounds on the back. Yeah, and which, that's why it's effortless, because this thing can tow with 12,500. 12,700. And that's actually less than the non-hybrid because of the extra weight. Yes. Of, I will say that even though that, you know, it's a, a half of what this thing can tow, this is still the smoothest towing experience I've ever had. Like, I've towed this race car a bunch of times with the, with the 4Runner that we're using to film this right now. It, it works, and that has a V8. <laughs> you don't want to completely forget that there's a BMW on the back. No, th this is, this. I almost have, right, because it just drives very well, and the, well, the trailer's got brakes as well. But this is just easy to drive. It's I easy think, to drive. I think there's a lot to be said for this powertrain, the transmission. Absolutely, absolutely. It's, they did a really good job. I'll say they did a really good job. So, as far as trucks go, Ford did a bang up job with this one. Of course, if you look through the other brands, you'll find minor advantages to the competitors in certain areas. But today, the power boost version of the new F-150 impressed us massively. And even though one Karstens were hurt during the making of this film, let's just say that even the new honorary Canadian James was happy to add this to the shortlist of our new potential team utility vehicle. All right, yo, check this out. This is so full Canadian. This is what you do when you strap something down on your trailer. You go like this. That's not going anywhere. Give it a go. <laughs> uh, ow! Hang on. Be back of the hand. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's not going anywhere. That's not going anywhere. Why are you hitting it so hard? It hurts. You gotta, you gotta do it. You, you, you're my man. You just strapped something to a trailer. Try it one more time. Um, that's, not that? go, that's not going anywhere. <laughs> that's not going anywhere. Atta boy. You know why? Why? Because it's a BMW and they don't go anywhere anyway. Oh.